Hi, everyone. PJ should be here in a few minutes. PJ. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Awesome. My bad. No worries. Long day. All right, so we're going to wrap up the trust with uh, by filing the UCC one, and I'm going to show you how to register everything and assign the bonds to a UCC three. Pull up the um, the collateral part. I'll run through that real quick. Okay. All right, so this is going to be the collateral section of your UCC one, and this is going to put a lien on everything, your trust. Um, we're going to mention your security agreement, your hold harmless indemnity agreement, power of attorney, common law copyright, uh, your driver's license, and um, our passport. Etc. Okay. All right. This is the entry of the collateral on behalf of the creditor slash principal. So it would be uh, last name, first name, middle. Can we exp can we expand the page width? View page width. <laughs> Sean's here. <laughs> I have a hard I have a hard time seeing it. So. <laughs> no worries. Thanks. 
Oh, Laura, you've been in the Australian conversation. You've been saying no worries a lot. That's all they say. Okay. So go into the name, Laura, and put last name, first name, middle. Our cat name. In the commercial chamber under necessity and the following property is hereby registered in the same. All certificates of birth document. So I'll be your birth certificate and I put my certificate of live birth number there as well. And as herein leaned and claimed at some certain of 100 million. And then put your state, your driver's license, or if you don't have one, like I don't have a driver's license, you get in less trouble when you don't have a driver's license. You can just hand them a passport. Anyways, passport, add passport in there too. Okay, your social security number slash UCC contract trust account prepaid account number. It was going to be your social security number with dashes. Your exemption identification number. They use your social security number without dashes. Then you could put exemption bond number. And then the numbers. All right. Now this is where you list all your security agreement and your security agreement is what lists all your properties. So that's why you don't have to really list all your property because all your property should, is referenced in your security agreement and your schedule A. Now the numbers that they're looking for are the numbers that we went over. Um, I use my date of birth and then the last four of my social as my footnotes and as uh, my identification numbers. And so if you look at the bottom of your security agreement, the way you filled it out at the bottom, that's the number that you're gonna put in there for all of these ones. So you'll go, yeah, it'll be uh, 0709, 1987, 1211, forward slash, POA, forward, yeah, yep, I put the PJP after the POA, but it doesn't matter, no, I don't need that, you go. And then do the same thing for your copyright notice. I do date of birth, last form of social, and then forward slash CLC, common law copyright, and then forward slash PJP. Boom. And then your hold harmless indemnity agreement number will be at the top of your hold harmless indemnity. Same thing, and then forward slash HHIA, forward slash PJP. Said registration is to secure the rights title of interest. 
And in the root of the title and the birth certificate, there's a she by, and this is where you were born. I was born in New York. Department of Health and Welfare Division of Vital Statistics, DNA, retina scans, fingerprints, and all of the ventures, indentures, accounts, and all the pledges represented by the same, included but not limited to the uh, pigness, hypothea, uh, hypothetical her heritaments, res, the energy, and all products derived therefrom, nunc pro tunc, but not limited to all capitalized names. And then this is where you do the variations of uh, your name, pretty much. Okay, are any derivative, derivatives thereof used in commerce and all contracts, agreements, and signatures and or endorsements? Uh, facsimiles, printed, typed, or photocopied of owner's name predicated on the straw man's and legal's trust, described as debt to all properties except for value and is exempt from levy. Uh, record owner is not the guarantor or surety to any other account by explicit reservation. Adjustment of this filing is from public policy, House Joint Resolution 192, public law 73-10, put that after 1933. After 1933. Hmm. And UCC 1-104 and 10-104. All proceeds, products, accounts, baggage, and fixtures, and the orders, therefore, um, are to be released to the secure party as authorized representative of the debtor. Debtor is a commercial transmitting utility and is a trust. All right. <clears throat> now copy that, Laurel. Then go to, I file everybody's in New York. Everybody that I do, I, I file everything in New York. Everything goes right through in New York. No hassle. Because New York is Babylon. And when you file it, do you go online and put PDF versions in, or do you actually mail it in? Oh, after you, after you file it, you'll get an email. Then you print the email, you'll get it notarized, and then you have to make public notice at your county and secretary. Okay. When we file it, do we mail the original or do we scan any whatever we have in and attach it as a PDF attachment in the electronic filing? I always keep my original, but I get a certified copy from the Secretary of State. And how did the Secretary of State get anything? Did you post it online through an attachment or did you, you mail can, it into the mail? You, you can request it. Right, how, how does it get there in the first place? You can request it from them. They have it there. I, it's on how, file. They'll print it. How did they get it on file? You file it online, dude. That's what I'm about to show you. Online. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And then, um, all right, so copy that. Or you did? Okay. Now go to, go on the internet and go to New York UCC 1E file. Type out New York. Yeah, you got it. Financing statement.
All right, go up top. You didn't have to put that in already, but. All right, so when you get here, this is where you're going to put your lien. This is your UCC1 financing statement. Um, it's the highest statement in this, it's the office of the Secretary of State. I got to read on why you should file this. Um, I think it's in Secure Creditor 1, Stop the Pirates 1, various articles. And it's called Why the UCC Filing. Anyways, while well, you're going into it. Yeah, see, I right, go, since you opened it. Go Stop the Pirates 1. Uh, various. Go well, down. Go well, down. Yeah, see, I gotta look for it. Uh. Mm -mm. It might be in the redemption manual four or five. Go there. That's addressing straw red. Go down. There you go. All the way at the bottom. Yeah, I'm not gonna go over this now, but that's the read that goes over by all that stuff. All right, so anyways, so this is the UCC one. This is just general information. I don't put a phone number in there or organization's name, so we'll just do the last name. No. Go to where it says or, start there, yeah. Cool. Um, put the care of address. You can send it to your suite, P.O. box, don't matter. That's fine. And then you put your debit card number as 20 bucks, $20. Yep, 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 yep. <clears throat> all right, so then, all right, so this is where you're going to list the debt tour and all the debt tour information. So go to organization's name. All cat name, straw man name, your trade name, the market of beast. Um, this is your PO box. Yep, sweet. You good? Oh yeah, you remember that. <laughs> it don't matter. I forgot the PO box number. You're good. Don't matter. All right. Um. Then you go down to one D. One D. Type of organization. Ends legis forward slash trust. All caps. Don't matter. I would put all caps. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Jurisdiction of the organization is private. 
Stop getting ahead of yourself, Salam. All right, organization ID number is going to be your birth certificate number. Cool. I'll go to number four. Individual's last name. Yep. Last name, first name, middle. Care of address, yep. Up brackets, yep, good. And then you come down, this is the collateral section. It's, it's, it's a plain white box. You'll copy and paste what we just filled out prior. You copy and paste it in this section. And it says right here, you only allowed 4,000 characters. So make sure you keep it, you do a, um, a, a letter count before you put it in there. And then it's gonna be a non-UCC filing. I never checked any of them off, but I mean, just check non-UCC filing, you're supposed to. Um, yeah, and then, so I put a secure party creditor, and then I do a bunch of underscores. But it comes out like crap, so. I've seen people where they can get the spaces, but I don't know, I couldn't do it on my last one. So, but on the left side, no, on the left side is debtor, I'm sorry. And then on the right side, it's the creditor. So you're not, you'll print it out and then you'll go to a notary and then you'll just print your name all caps on the left and then sign your name on the right, have them stamp it and then put a dollar 15 stamp in the bottom right corner, thumb print it, sign it. You said a dollar 15? Yeah, because Sean said that's international. Dollars are fine too, you use dollar stamps. I use dollar stamps too. I have dollar stamps on mine, but I'm using dollar 15 for my one. And then 15 broken down in three cents or something? No, they have dollars fifteen. They're dollar fifteen. Okay. I think the extra fifteen cents is the GST included in the stamp or something. But. All right. Cool. So then you hit. You'll hit file. No, don't, you don't gotta put that on there. You're wrong. Then you'll file and then you'll get an email from New York State Docs and then you print that email on bonded watermark paper. And then once you do this and you file it with the Secretary of State and the county, you'll have a statutory lien on the estate or trust. I'm sorry. Okay, and then now go to um, assign bond. This is where you assign the bonds. And I'll just go over it with you guys. All right, so. Your top part of the UCC, your UCC three will be, let's say when you go to uh, New York UCC one e-file, it'll say amendment, the UCC three is the amendment. So you'll fill the top part out the same as you did over there, your name, 
and then your credit card information, it's 20 bucks. And then you come down and you'll get, you put your initial UCC one filing. So you'll get your UCC one file number. It usually starts off with the year you filed it, 2018. And then a set of numbers. Um, why he has the dash like that, I've never seen a UCC number like that. But anyways, you put your, right, your um, it's like 16 letters, numbers long. That's for your initial UCC one financing statement, one A. Then you go down to four, you'll check off assignment. Then you're, nothing's changed, so you'll go to six, and you'll put the United States Treasury, and then all the information right there. And then you come down to number eight, amendment the collateral, and you pick check off assigned, and this is where your registered mail number comes in. So you'll put uh, registered mail number. Then you'll put BC bond order and the registered mail number that goes with that. Then you'll type in indemnity bond and then you will type in um, bill of exchange, bill of exchange, non-negotiable bill of exchange. Yep. Take that, oh, you can't take that private registered. Uh, oh yeah, get that out of there. Yep, yep, yep. And then non-negotiable bill of exchange. And then to the right of all of those, put the registered mail numbers. If you have one for all three, it's fine. If you were able to get a roll or get all three um, different registered mail numbers, awesome. Not a big deal if you didn't. I only had one and it wasn't even registered mail. It was an overnight package. But I still got my treasury card back. And then the value will be a hundred billion. Cause this, again, this is what charges up your account. This is what uh, your insurance, et cetera. And then when you go to liquidate, these are the bonds that get liquidated, the BC bond order, your certificate certificate of by birth and then I'm gonna get you the 82 number <clears throat> they just keep breaking my bees for this 98 I called but I gotta wait so long to get my confirmation they wouldn't give me my number over the phone it's just a hassle all the time for me it's all right though I've been through hell I'm expecting heaven All right, cool. And then you come down here. This is where you're going to put your private number. Um, optional file or reference. Put the registered mail numbers. Yep. And then last name, first name, middle. Then you put no, oh, oh, yep. Then you put your uh, original UCC file, UCC one financing statement number. Yep, the same one as one A. Go down. Okay. And then this is where you list um, Raul Maldonado, Steve Mnuchin, etc. Whoever you're gonna assign it to. Last name, first name, middle. Oh. 
<clears throat> I would sign assign everything to Raul Maldonado, and then I would send certified copies of everything to Mnuchin. But the main one is Raul Maldonado. And as we were talking about the Trust 62, it's all international down there. It's the port. Can we send it to him in his individual capacity, or do we use his, his capacity name, Secretary with Treasurer of Puerto Rico, Raul Maldonado, which would be an entity name? No, I always send them to him personally. Okay. I always say, well, I try to anyways. Privately, I write private, confidential, all over my packs. So anyways, I, bet I just came back from New York. Um, I got a bill of sale for a Bentley. I got a bill, so I got approved for that. So they wrote me up my bill of sale. And I got yesterday, or two, two days ago, three days ago, I went for buying my dad a boat, and then I'm going to get an RV so I can start traveling. I hate flying. The commercial flights are just balls. And I haven't flown charter yet, but I will. But for now, I'm on traveling this big RV and come visit everybody. Uh, but so I'll, I'll let you guys know in two weeks what happens. I think I have everything planned and figured out as it should go. So I have a couple of people helping me. You get a, did you get a cash buy order and negotiate it? Well, that's the bill of sale. That's the document of title. That's all I need. Because if you read ABC's, because uh, that's what pays for everything. The bill of sale pays for everything because it, it turns into a bill of exchange because it has a name, a date, an amount, and a signature. Where does that come? Usually it's just printed out and you add other signatures or something to it or? Right, so they ask for my social before they print that out because that's what is running everything. They need your account number. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why I tell people to go to the bank and tell them to get a loan without a social security number or a signature. Why and then ask, okay. then ask them to see, you want to see the transfer from the person or entity loaning you the money, which is basically you want to tell them you want to see the 95 cash flow statement and rule 424, you want to see the B5 prospectus. And you want to see exactly where, the, which account it is, it's coming from. Because last time I checked and I pulled up that bank fraud, it's definitely illegal to start loaning, your, loaning the money, loaning the credit, bank's credit, so. It's, that's why you have to put your trade name in first. Like people see people leave that application, so when people go get a credit, any, everything that you sign, you can go back and claim and get. 1099A. And then you send them, I'll go over the letter, I'll see if I, can, if I get permission to go over this OID letter. And then you send them the letter and give them notice that they have to file the OID, and if they don't, then you file it. And then I'll go over how to properly fill out an OID. But I got, when I went to this concert, I got into this bullshit, little bullshit altercation with a sergeant because he wants to run up to this car like he's Superman. So I'm going to go, I'm going to show you guys from star A all the way to this dividend payout I'm about to get and move my shit into, or move my case into federal district court. And uh, I'm not going after any judges or any cops. I'm just going after the state of New York. I'm not going after anybody personally because they all need to act together. So if one, one person does a crime, you are responsible for it. So that's why I'm just going after New York State. They're insured. So I'm going right to the state insurance commissioner. I'm throwing a nice little affidavit in there. Put my order in for removal to that state municipal bullshit ass little building. And I'll put that in federal district court. And then we'll see what happens from there. I know what's going to happen. Anyways. But yeah, I'll walk everybody through that. I'm going to go over the private administrative procedure. I'm going to go over your bill of complaint. I'm going to put a bill of complaint live in front of everybody. This is going to be a nice class. For now, we're going to get finish this. We're going to finish the treasury pack so you guys can send your packs off. And then I can go into court, discharging, student loans, foreclosures, mortgages, all that. Because like I said, I want to write this music. I'm not trying to do this every week. But for now, 
so we everybody gets a good grasp on make sure everybody gets a good grasp of how to discharge that administrator estate and as long as i got enough good videos out there then that's all you need so anyways keep going down laura yep then you can add minutia and that's awesome perfect beautiful perfect all right keep going down Is that the bottom? So Maldonado now on a Mnuchin yeah. or additional secured parties, is that right? Yeah. Okay. You can't you can't be a treasurer unless you are one. I know that. You definitely have to be a, to be on a bank board, you have to be expatriated. Sit on a board. So I know these I know they definitely got this. All right, but keep going, Laura. Is that the bottom? That's the bottom. All right, cool. So that'll be in part of your pack. Now, now open up Redemption Manual 4 or 5. And when I tell everybody that my pack is so lame, like everybody's packs now that I've done for them are all better than mine. So I'm redoing all mine so I can match everybody else's. But the Redemption Manual 4 or 5 works because I followed it to a T and I used, I didn't know what bonded watermark paper was. I mean, I have, I printed my billion dollar bonds on like certificate card paper like you hand like little kids at like an award ceremony and shit so like gene said you could it's just the verbiage that goes on and stuff you can write it on a napkin and negotiate it that's how all right um yeah pull up the book go on, it's in secured to secure creditors and then yep redemption man yep, yep. And then try like starts in I think in the four hundreds. Type in the page number if you can. No, can't do it. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Two hundred. Four hundred. Yeah, no, no, no. You have you. All right, cool. All right, this is the tenth. All right, so go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, and we'll just make we'll just hit the run through real quick. Hit him, hit him, hit him. Mm. We're going to do a quick run through start to finish. So if you guys try to mimic this, then you'll have a background of me talking about what it is. Because I mimic this, you know what I mean? And when I'm, once I didn't get arrested at my first case, I knew everything else was real. It was just going to be a matter of going into the position. of private banker. There's a lot of prestige that comes with it. There's a, a certain way you have to carry yourself, a certain way you have to speak to individuals, certain um, procedures, certain, everything's completely different than what you're normally doing. All right, all right, yep, keep going, we're almost there. I think it starts off with the security, yep. Go up. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Go down a little bit. Right there. So this is, see, that gives you the list of what you're going to need pretty much. Right there. And then number two. Keep going down, yep, number two. These are the documents that are referenced in your UCC. Then the chargeback process is the cover letter, your bill of exchange, um, the birth certificate. You need to send just a, a certified copy of your birth certificate, don't send the original your BC bond order and your indemnity bond, a 1040 ES. And I'm not sure if I use a 1040B. And then your UCC3. All right, so go down, let we'll just run through it. Start off with your security agreement, then we'll go over that, go down. This is putting your security interest. And then when you have a security interest, now you're entitled, you become the entitlement holder. Go down, they can get the video going over all this. So this is your security agreement. It's putting a security interest for your estate. It's making a distinguishment between the 
strong man, trade name, and the living person, the live, the private man, last name, first name, middle. This is provisions, default terms, your schedule A, indemnity bond, fidelity bond in there. Awesome, there's a data sheet for it. What goes where? Even numbers it for you, see? Then it gives you a blank one and they number it for you. And then you can reference the data sheet up top. Go up, see? Yep, see number four. And then say boom, and it shows you what goes there. That's what I mean, family. Like, Follow instructions. This is why people in jail can do this and get themselves out. Because they give you the stuff that you just have to fill in the blanks. They can pen it in. Power of attorney. Boom. Simple. Simple form. One page. See you later. Get her done. Two pages. I'm sorry. Data sheet for the power of attorney. Boom. Then it gives you a blank one. Boom, fill in the blanks. There you go. Boom. See you later. Common law copyright. This is what it looks like. Boom, boom, boom. 500,000. Boom, boom, boom. Cool, cool. Blank one. Data sheet, blank one. Hold harmless. Boom, boom. Don't hold my body harmless. Hold harmless. And then you have the blank one, numbered. Again, you can reference your data sheet real quick. Boom, UCC financing statement. We just filled it out, go down. Keep going, it'll just tell you to file it in Washington and it goes over the, see? Boom, how to fill out the, the fields that we just did. This is where I learned everything from, right here. There's your example. See, they just had a secured party on there. I had the debt tour on the left-hand side. So I, I, I try to make things my own, you know. There's your example, how to fill it in. There you go. Probably an old, this is an old book, so these are this is probably all outdated stuff, but and very, very informational. There you go. Go down, down. Here we go. Yep. Yep. Now this is your chargeback documents. This is also a part of your trust. This is going to Raul Maldonado and Mnuchin. Chargeback. Listed is what enclosed, your bill of exchange, the birth, the BC bond order, your birth certificate, boom. You, uh, 1040 ES, there's your chargeback, boom, boom. Cover sheet, data sheet. There's your non-negotiable, there's your BC bond order. That's the lame one, the new one that I showed you guys. You have the two, the two sureties and the two witnesses. It's much more prettier. <laughs> There's your UCC3. Yep. There's one for the acceptance for your vehicle. There's your acceptance language for the birth certificate, same ones that I used. And then your, there's your 1040 ES. Yeah, so whatever marking you in, so we're in, book, I mean quarter, I'm sorry. And then at, we're in number three. So we would be filling out three because this is due by September. And you would just put that banker's acceptance the same as they did on the birth certificate. Right there, you put it right on uh, the third quarter right there. You don't fill nothing out. You just put the banker's acceptance on the front. Two cents stamp on the back, sign it, date it, put it part of your pack. Keep going down. And then by next week, all my stuff will be notarized and scanned into the computer. So you'll see, I'll, I'll go, I'll have a review of the pack. I'll take pictures of the pack. So you guys don't have to guess.
Thank you, bro. Yep. And that's pretty much your treasury pack. And then you just add all the affidavits we put in there from the pri the previous three classes. Affidavit of secure party, affidavit of reservation of rights, your reservation of rights, affidavit of foreign status, and peaceful inhabitants. And add, you can add in your executor letter. Yeah, it goes over court. I used that in my first court case, the proof of claim one. Conditional acceptance. The conditional acceptance holds weight because you're accepting and you're not disagreeing and you're not arguing, you're not belligerent with them. Yep, that goes over the a little bit of the yep, non response. All right, we can get out of there. But that, that's, I mean, it's a good read. That was my foundation for everything, was this book. Crazy. And then I got into Gene, and that was it. And I started studying trust, securities, UCC, accounting, tax law. Gene. All right, so that's the treasury pack. I'm trying to think if I missed anything out of that. I just have to add in there. I'm pretty sure I got it all. Laura, did I miss anything? Go over the list that we have. We'll go through the whole checklist now. Pull up the you got the checklist? I know we got the checklist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these forms too, the IRS forms. Yep. Yep. You gotta add the International Bill of Exchange in there. I don't, I know I did one for you, right? I don't remember. I know, you better check your pack. You gotta put BC bond order on there. So the broad stroke process is that we step up, show that we're alive, and then we um, make affirmations, take take authority, create joinder, and then do set off. Is that the overall flow? Right. Yeah. The main the main set off comes from your security agreement you want, because in Admiralty law, whoever has the highest security interest has control and has first in line, first in time to all rights and proceeds. So we, we came in first as a secured party, then we created joinder with Mnuchin and, and uh, Maldonado. Well, we created, a, we created a trust relationship. On the UCC3, that would kind of like being joinder, right? Or something right, like that. Right, but it's a, they have a fiduciary role now. They're fiduciary trustees. That, this is what IRS Form 56 dedicates to and then we have a 56 show ourselves as the executor then you get your estate EIN and then you'll have your name as the executor you write your will you get your death certificate then you go through probate court to get a uh, uh, the let a letters testamentary to say that you're the author our personal representative and the executor for that estate so then you can open up a brokerage account with your estate number then you do your treasury direct with your estate number you get a 90 you get a 98 EIN foreign grantors trust you put that estate that domestic estate into the foreign trust because that's what they did they created the SESTA K trust and then they put our estate within the the, the SESTA K trust so we're liquidating that this is what you're putting all the bonds in for. You'll be liquidating the all cap social, the social security number and you will be going in the total private using 
you won't have a, you won't new, use your social security number anymore. You'll use your 82 number and the 98 number to open up your bank accounts and do all your banking. And you'll, you'll bank right with the treasury. At what point does the cage code come in with a SAM.gov? That's okay. So f I feel the cage code when you are dealing with securities, you need a securities account. I'm being walked through the cage code this week. Are you going through SAM.gov to get the cage codes to co pick code CCR number? Yes. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. When you create this. I'm sorry, when you're creating all these, uh, this package, you're creating all these templates and then are you gonna post it on more set looks? You're gonna see all my stuff, all my templates, my whole pack. I'm redoing, oh. my, I'm redoing my whole pack. Oh, it's nice. Almost, it's almost done, you know I mean? It takes me, for me, cause I've done so many, like I can do my whole pack in like two hours, two and a half hours. Done, start to finish, printed. The thing that people don't understand that takes the longest is stamping it, signing it, and you know what I mean? That, it takes forever. People have no idea how much you're gonna have to sign your name because I, I print out four copies of everything. I keep one original from me. I, I send an original to the county and then the, the other two originals to the treasury and then everybody else just gets certified copies of everything. And these are originals of what? Affidavits or originals of? Everything, UCC1s, everything that on this list. I've always printed out four, filled out four. Okay. So on the that's UCC3, the when we do the assignment, that's the assignment of the trust, and that's when they become trustees. No, no, no. Those, you're assigning the bonds to them so they can, so your bonds are going to cure. It takes 90 days. Once they're cured, then you can fill out a Form 966, which is dissolve and liquidate. Um, that's what I was walked through a couple weeks ago. Um, that's when stuff starts to get really fun. Thanks for the patience. Thanks. And then, um, I'm going to see if they're going to let me show this purchase. So we'll see. I hope they will. I'm pretty sure they will. Maybe not. I don't know. But I think the cage code, I believe when I was speaking to the individual, it was for doing government contracts. So if you wanted to do a government grant, I think there's something that has to do with within the business transaction and paperwork that you're going to be dealing in securities. I mean, I've seen grants, my aunt's a grant writer. I just don't, I just, I'd have to talk to them and see what happens with the cage code. I haven't utilized my cage code yet, so that's why I don't talk about it. How'd you get the cage code already? <laughs> because I have someone that I every now and then I have somebody that comes in and asks me if I have this account, this, that. And I'm like, no, where are you reading this from? Who told you this? Okay. And, and you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden I have my Finn's number and I'm like, all right. And then we'll she'll still have the individual hit me up and we'll talk about what, what do you do with a SAM number? And I'll, I'll look up this and we'll talk about it. Cage code, talk about it. What are you doing on Duns and Bradstreet? And I'm, well, this is what I need to do. do that. So that's, I mean, that's how I got these accounts out. And I don't talk about them because somebody walked through them. I talk about the Finns on it because it's just one page and I have permission to talk about it. But the accounting that I've been doing, I have I told the person, listen, I'm going to show, you know, certain people, but I can't show it to everybody yet because it's not mine to show as of yet. But once I get my stuff, then we'll see. But if I have to sign an NDA, it'll be like getting cage codes and stuff, but that's not that hard. Once you, once you, once you get your Duns and Bradstreet, uh, I mean, uh, you, you can call Duns and Bradstreet and they'll, they'll forward you or give you the number. They did it for my buddy out in um, New Mexico. So. Wait, I've seen it. You need to get the EIN number to get the Dun and Bradstreet number to get the Sam, go to sam.gov. And then open an account with sam.gov that then go yep. in and get the cage code, yeah. code, big code. That's what the path I'm doing. Yep. Absolutely. That's, I mean, that's pretty so much. If, if PJ can't talk about it, like if, if he's. There you go. Like, yes. Yeah, I could do it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you can. Word. So there you go. So sam.gov going through there. And I initially heard about it because there's in uh, the, I work for victims of crime act over this, over the attorney general of Florida's office. And um, before some guy swung a book at my face to stop me from talking to a third party and 
I reported it and they fired and they fired me. They fired me. And this guy admitted to swinging a book at my face to stop me from talking. Someone witnessed it and the IG terminated me. So I, I want to go back and hit them with a lien for my unpaid wages when they covered up the First Amendment violation in the office. But anyway, um, part of the whole getting a grant under the Victims <laughs> Crime Act, right. someone had to have a CCR number. And gotcha. so the CCR number had is all tied into Sam.gov, and that's how ah, I learned about it. I see. Well, then that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you. Um, okay, so, yeah, the death certificate. So there's an affidavit of death, and then there's a death division at Vital Statistics. You send that out with the birth certificates. You sh they should send you the death certificate with the coroner's seal on it. Then you take that death certificate. Then you take your last will and testament. And this is all explained in Alexander A. Bove, Wills, Estates, and Trust. And it goes 1 through 10. It goes how to go through probate. But so once I do that, I'm taking pictures of everything. I'm good at that, at remembering to do that. And so uh, the one through ten starts after the copy stamp or the death certificate. Where does the where does both? All right, the one through ten shows you what to do in pro, probate, so you can get the le the testamentary letter that you're the authorized representative. So it's below the line. It's below the line. The estate EIN is that is that both? Yeah, this is that's not part of your pack. You don't need that to. Yeah, I separated this by the pack and extras, and then at the bottom, I just have things to do after you file. Right. With the treasury. Right. What if I'm a jump the gun? I already have the 98 and the Duns and the Sam. So this, the there's no, there's no order to get those numbers. Okay. So that those, those numbers are, didn't set up your trust, you know? So you can start getting the tax ID numbers and they, and they've done yeah, a press yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. You can do all that stuff now. Thanks. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, you don't need your trust set up to do that stuff at all. Nope. What about these affidavits? I haven't seen you do a UCC one on these. You want me to? See, you want so that'll be part of my court. I'll show you how to do it. I'm gonna go through court. You guys are gonna sit through court with me. I'm gonna show you. I'll tape everything too. I'll go down to the offices. I'll record everything. They won't let me, but um. Uh. So you're talking about after you default them and then you get a certificate of default from Secretary of State and you put that on the UCC one? Is that what you're talking about, Steve? Um, no, I just I haven't seen any of these affidavits. I'll put yeah. my affidavit together for you. It'll be a true bill. Okay. All right. We just haven't gotten to some of these yet, Steve. So some of these are the basic forms, the most important ones for filing, but we'll get into those as we get further into the study. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, after this class, I'm gonna go over court discharging, and then hopefully I get permission to show you guys how to buy things up, or then at least go in and speak to your like mayor or senator and get, you know, some businesses going for yourself and helping your cities out at least you know or i can put you in contact i, can, I just have to see you know i don't mind who talks to who i'm in competition with nobody so i do what i can to help out whoever um so yeah that list right there before the line is going to be your treasury pack that's all i mean and then take that after it's all notarized, stamped, you go down to FedEx or Kinko's and you get it bonded. Or if you want, you have to go through each individual page and then like at the top or on the side, you take a glue stick and you got to do it lightly because it has to be bonded or um, it has to be have it adhesive on it. So it's an adhesive contract. Peter. Yep. Hi, it's Tanya. Hello. How you doing? Fine. Question. So does the whole pack take that whole pack and have it bonded? Absolutely. And and which, which one of these documents actually uh, go and get notarized? Uh, I'm sorry. Go and take it down to um, 
Hmm. I lost my thought. Take it down in, uh, to the courts and put on file. Okay. So, the record of deeds. All right. Well, I'll make a new title. So say, make the title public notice to county clerk and secretary of state. Put UCC one, original. Security agreement. Fee schedule. What did you do when you turned on something? I totally lost my thought. All the affidavits. Hmm. Indemnity bond. He told me he writing it down. Then make a new title. Oh, legal notice and demand too. I'm sorry. All right, so that's oh <clears throat> that you get to make your own pack, bond it. And bring it down, and you're not recording anything. This is a public notice. So, yep. And make a public notice. Yep, bind it. I'm saying bind. Is that by publication in the newspaper, public notice, or what? You can. Uh, so this is what I did to make a public notice. When I sent my stuff to the Secretary of State, I think it was, I needed a $40 money order. I wrote a letter. All I said was, dear, here, you can write this down, Laura, so they can see what I wrote. Uh, dear Secretary of State, this money order is for making a public notice on the UCC. So how did you come up with the amount? What amount? The $40 money order. Uh, okay, so I sent, I sent a pack out with no money <laughs> and they sent me uh, a sheet back and it had like what I owed for them to file it. Oh, okay. Didn't say anything was wrong. Okay, so this is orders for making a public notice of UCC one. If you find anything to be unlawful, please point out and send back with correction. This letter was written in good faith. Am I writing on the screen again? <laughs> And thank you, whatever you guys want to say. Thank you for your time. Have a blessed day. So all, under the UCC1 original, all those other documents are in, incorporated into the UCC1 and you send them a bound booklet? And, right. Okay. Right. Yep, and then you can, you can go to the legal section of the newspaper and post this public notice for four weeks. You could do that. You do that with your common law copyright as well. You take your common law copyright, you put in the legal section, and make that a public notice as well. And you run that for four weeks. PJ, do you want right um, signature block on these letters? I don't do my signature block. I just sign it on the right hand side. I put a one dollar stamp, my thumbprint, and sign it. <laughs> and I always handwrite everything. I don't do a lot of stuff on computers because that's when they'll call you and test you and they'll want to make sure that you're the one filling it out and not somebody else because it's your journey not theirs 
the monarch sign on the top of the page and <laughs> they do they put the signature at the top and well i was i figured the bottom right was the last say on the page yeah so. it's underwriting though instead of overriding <laughs> <laughs> gotcha i don't know i've seen it both ways just Okay, and then I'll, ready? you wrote in red ink too, right? Yes. Yes. Text him, I'll text him, I'll tell him I'll talk to him tomorrow. I'll walk him through court, or I'll call his court form so he's not as nervous. He can record it if he wants. Has Anil done his common law due process by asking you to see the magistrate and having them deny him seeing the magistrate, denying him due process to face the <laughs> <laughs> You take two witnesses down along with- It's the hard to find them two witnesses though. Yeah. I got Anil's number. I'll text him. I'm texting him right now. Okay. Laura, I got his number. I'll text him. Anyway. Hey, thank you. That's for any people out there. You take two witnesses, go to the clerk, ask to see the magistrate, slide her paperwork, get her to deny you three times because there's no warrant or affidavit of arrest. So when they deny you three times, they denied you facing, dis getting it right to face your accuser, Sixth Amendment, denial of due process, and a constitutional violation. Denial of due process vitiates everything. Boom. And then it's an automated, automatic civil torts claim for 1400 a minute that they kept you incarcerated and kept you under <laughs> whatever. Right. Right. They don't want you to know that last piece. You have six months to file a civil torts claim. <laughs> Although I, I, that's, that's the public side. I think with an agricultural and you can come back at any time for them taking the agricultural product, depriving the beneficiaries of the estate that value and come after them anytime with a Strong right. arms, strong arm claws with a superior, super priority, secret lien, the agricultural lien. So, either way, absolutely, absolutely. That's for kings only. All right, so make up a new title, and this is you're gonna. Re this is the only stuff that you record at the registrar. You're gonna take your a certified copy of your authenticated birth certificate and certi or certificate of by birth or both. Since they closed my certificate of live birth, even though I have an unofficial copy of it, the, the adoption decree would also be kind of serving as a live birth for anyone else who's been adopted. That's uh, everything that has your name, Miles, are all securities. Okay. That one has both. That's where they gave me the DBA, Sean Scott Haggerty for them. Gotcha. Um, affidavit of ownership, the birth certificate. Laura, thank you. Affidavit of what? Ownership. UCC one and security agreement. 
It's got to have your Schedule A with it, that security agreement. Gene, this is the last class showing you how to send everybody's back out. Most, some students have already done this, so this is just refreshing them. But after this class, I'm gonna go over court, discharging, foreclosures, student loan discharge, etc. And then I can't go, Larry, I can't go over the 1040X because I haven't filled one out yet. But I can go over 1041s. And I'm dissecting the 706. I'm pretty much done with it. I pretty much get the gist of it. 709 is pretty simple as well, but 706 is like 30 pages. The first six pages are the most important of 706. I don't think Larry's on tonight, but that's good that you mentioned that. Well, I have his emails. I had to get this week out of the way. Now I'm, I'm going to have more free time again. Very good. Because it's just going to be waiting for my phone call to pick up my stuff. You know what I mean? Hopefully, I pray. Anyways. All right, so you'll take this to the county registrar's office and tell me you want to record that in the deeds, where the deeds are. Because that's the real estate right there, your birth certificate and CLB. And that's the only thing you have to record. Everything will always be a public notice. I'm just trying to think if I uh, forgot anything. And uh, Peter, on the uh, death uh -huh. certificate, there everybody keeps saying it's hard to get the death certificate. So what do I do? It's not hard. People just don't know what they're doing. That's all. Okay. You'll see all my stuff. Awesome. Uh, you have basically all this is your authenticated birth certificate. Then you do an affidavit of death. You get it notarized. Send that pack into the death division of vital statistics and they send you your death certificate. You know what I mean? Just, okay, so I'm not actually because oh, everything's in your affidavit. Oh, and you can I mean you can add your will to it. That pack. So Okay, so I'm not actually going to the coroner's office. No, no. no. Okay. No. I thought so at first. That that's where you went to go get the, the seal, go see the coroner, but the coroner must be in vital statistics. Okay. And from what Sean said last class, the coroner, I mean, they got some real power. They can go arrest, you know, the sheriffs. You know, and I said, every time, every coroner I've ever met or seen, they all wear bow ties. Like, you know what I mean, <laughs> their own little class. They always have the bow ties on. I mean, look at these dudes. Come down for like 20 grand just to pronounce somebody dead. Someone, someone's asking, why do we want a death certificate to close up the estate? Or what's right, because you died. You died. That that estate name is dead. It's all caps. Corporations, corp. That's why when you go to a cemetery and the tombstones, the last names on there, all caps, dead, it's corpse. And you're you're dot you're dead. So when somebody tries to charge your estate, well, he's dead. Now you have your death certificate, affidavit of death, etc. And then you died because now you're opening, you're liquidating that estate that you didn't create. But there was securities that they created that you left abandoned. Birth certificate, COLB, etc. Social security number. That's so a since, trust. What? All right. So since, since we can do whatever they can do better, we step in as our own coroner and declare the estate closed by issuing our own affidavit of death. Right, we're That's liquidating right. is dead. Yeah, we can exactly. do whatever they can do, we can do better because we can write an affidavit and they can. Absolutely, well, absolutely. What if you got your uh, full name changed? See, this is what, <clears throat> you, 
all right, so if your name is changed, is your name changed on your birth certificates and social security cards? It is. Then just use your uh, na- your changed name. Whatever new name that you have, use that. Do I need to change it with the Internal Revenue Service also? I don't do anything with the name change. The only thing that I've done with the name change is you get a decree is I, you just go from last name, first name, middle. Okay. If you want to change with the uh, Internal Revenue Service, you have to fill out a new SS5, SS5-FS, and because the IRS relies upon that SS5 form, which is a, an IMF Treasury form. They don't say that, but it is, and mm-hmm. that's what they rely on. Now, I would also do an SF-181 to change your, na- your, uh, your race to na- Native American, Caucasian, uh, white, because Obama said black um, African Americans have no rights, have no standing in law. Okay, that's another PDF on there, okay. uh, YouTube okay. on it. Shit is crazy, man. So yeah, what the, are you saying we're changing our uh, nationality, our race on, on what document? SF-181. Yeah, standard form 181, very important. I just realized that how important it actually is with the IRS and that you change your nationality. To native? Oh, and sure. white. This, I wanted to ask you. Uh, someone was asking me about how do I get into my general post? How do I come in the private side of the post office using general post? Um, I use the rural route, the carrier route mailing. Gotcha. So if, gotcha. You go to U, if you go to USPS.com and look up a zip code, they'll give you the carrier route in the details section that no one looks at. They have all kinds of cool stuff down there on the bottom. <laughs> and then you use RR and then the carrier route, then the street number, and then there's no abbreviations. You just use the full spelled out, and then you do the city and the state. I put California Republic, and I put zip exempt without the United States. And I've sent registered mail, free registered mail to myself that way, and uh, certified mail just to show when I go to go to do my passport, I'm gonna use this non-zip coded address, and I'm gonna have this postal record with a certificate of mailing and return receipt all together to the show them no the postmaster general agrees with this mailing address i don't know how you could disagree with it <laughs> <laughs> awesome 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 i love it okay what can i go over all right i'll start going over court and then we'll, i'm gonna stop when I get to my affidavit and I'll go over, I'll start the affidavit and the bill of complaint next class. That's from me. Do you want me to take any notes on this for court? Yeah, we're gonna, obviously I don't have my tickets in front of me, so it's gonna be hard. So I'm just gonna give, I'm gonna tell you how I'm about to attack court, why I'm attacking it this way, how I'm gonna put it together, what my first step is gonna be, what my last step is gonna be. And I'm gonna go over everything in between for private administrative process. Um, that's I'll go over the private administrative process. <clears throat> okay, so for any complaint, violation, code, ordinance, whatever. It's just, it starts off as just a simple complaint. It's no big deal. So they hit your estate. I'll just use a simple example, a traffic stop. You get pulled over, they hit, they tap your estate, get your license registration, you know, your state ID, your state register card. And then they give you a seatbelt ticket. And then they give you a court date when you have to go and Pay your fine. You have, if you ever sit in court, one of those municipal buildings, um, he doesn't act as a judge. He just acts as a banker. That's why he sets up payments with people. And he's a debt collector. And he's banking. It's not. There's no law in there. Just admiralty law, contracts. That's why it's all contracts in there. So the way courtrooms are set up is 
why they're there and why it's admiralty law is your all cap name is a vessel it's a ship and the streets are the waters that's why most banks are on the corners most banks every time you see a bank they're on the corners of streets all all banks are on the corners of all streets you get every now and then you get small ones in like the middle of like a lot or a plaza or something i get it but the big banks are always on a corner bet so your all cat name is a vessel the cops pull you over they're pirates um pagans pirates it's pretty much the same thing um So they they get you to they get you to the dry dock. The dry dock is court. That's why some federal court buildings, when you have the o- overview f- shot, it's a ship. So they bring you to the dry dock, and that's where you have your two separate square. If you have the overview of the courtroom, you have your two separate squares, and then they have the bar separating it, and then. You never go to, I'm, I'm just trying to explain court to you. You never go to this courtroom. Don't, never go there, no matter what. Never show up. Always go before if you want. I'm going to show you though. Um, if you do, uh, if you go before court and you want to talk to the clerk, you have to speak to the judge in chambers. Like, like Sean just mentioned. If they don't, I mean, if they do let you in, they talk and they let you settle there, cool, they dismiss it, whatever. Or if you can speak to the judge and say, what do I need to sign so everybody gets paid here? I want a piece of my estate, too. If they break your bees and I I say, well, then you get my order. We're going to go into district court, Title 28, USC, Section 1333 states that, you know, district courts have original jurisdiction for the matters to be heard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's what. The removal comes from Title 28 U.S.C. 1441 to 1447. That's your notice of removal to federal court as district court. Uh, there was a guy that got rolled up on five cop cars, took him in, and went, he was there before the desk clerk, and he says, I waive all, uh, I do not waive any right remedy or defense, and I waive all benefits without God. And the, the guy put his head down and says, get him out of here. No shit. I do not waive any right remedy or defense, and I waive all benefits without God. Right. <laughs> and they, they let him go right away. He didn't have his car. He had to go get that back. But anyway. <laughs> that happened anyway. in Virginia, near McLean, Virginia, near D.C. Wow. Okay. So you're pulled over and the right you got your ticket. So all right. All, this is the first this is automatic. It's mandatory. You have to have a counterclaim. The counterclaim comes from Federal Rules of Civil Procedure Rule 13. What's the counterclaim? Well they just that ticket now comes with a QCIP number, which is a financial asset created in your name. The recoupment from that comes from UCC Article 3-305 and 306. Laurel, pull up my uh, commercial notes. It's the first paragraph. It goes over. Everybody's seen it. I get it from Jeans, where I learned it from. Down. No, down. Yep, down. Yep, yep. B, yo. All right, cool. This is what are your claims and defenses? Under UCC 3 305, you have a claim and recoupment, which is a counterclaim, and that's the same language in Rule 13 of Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. Rule, th- Rule 13 says there are two types of counterclaims. There's a mandatory and a permissive counterclaim. Mandatory arises from the same transaction and occurrence as the plaintiff's claim, so boom. The state of so-and-so just pulled you over. They put a complaint in on your estate. They just created security. Where the hell did they get the authority to create securities in your name and whoever consented to any of that? 
usually it's under duress because there's they got some funny guy in a uniform with some pagan badge with a gun and the trigger happy pressuring you shining lights in your face asking for license and registration like it's fucking Nazi Germany over here <laughs> anyways and then Gene says you can't be a creditor unless you file the counterclaim it's mandatory and this is why people are getting railroaded it's cool that you have a UCC1 it's cool that you're secured it's it's that's it's good this is your this is your procedure now this is where Gene talks about having you, you have to know the rules of procedure you can't be a creditor unless you file a counterclaim UCC 3-305 and the second claim is the 306 you have a proprietary and possessionary uh, property interests in the note and its proceeds. I don't know where that and property came from. I should just say proprietary and possessionary. Interest. Excuse me. And you have the right to rescind negotiation of the transaction. Uh, negotiation means the endorsement. On, all right, so that's where he's getting into this. Um, so this, instead of the mortgage note, it will be your traffic number. Your uh, Every case number or the traffic ticket will have a number on the top right usually. Okay. So that's this is where my counterclaim is going to come from. It's going to be an affidavit. And it's going to be a bill of complaint. So go, I'll do the affidavit next class. So we'll go over a little bit of the bill of complaint. Or did I, we went over that a little bit last class, right? All right, keep going down in the notes. I'm going to go over the notes a little bit. So the type of claim is it? It's an adverse claim. The counterclaim is going to be an adverse claim. And if you read UCC Article 8-505 to 508, that's where it talks about being an entitlement holder, entitlement rights. The counterclaim, see, is called an adverse claim. It's defined in UCC Article 8-102 and 105. It tells you how in 505 to 508. It goes over into all the entitlement. Now, because they're dealing in, in they're, they're an investment company, the state of New York, it's private, you know what I mean? They're a private corporation. It's an investment company that they have NIAX numbers. They Oh, you know what? Pull up the letter rogatory. You can add this for your court case. I'll add this to my court case. I think it's Jesus. Go to the letter rogatory. The letter rogatory is a letter of advice. And I always send this with all my court stuff. Down. All right, boom. I don't think this is the one. No. Go back. Yeah. No, it should say criminal. Go to court bonds. Go to PJ Docs. Go to court bonds, and then it's all in there. PJ Docs. PJ Docs. Court. Where's my court stuff? You don't have my court bonds? Go down. How did I get? How did you get that folder? Oh. I've read all this stuff too. All these files you see, I read all this shit. Go up. Oh, maybe it's in the original. Go back. Go to go to my go to the USB drive. Oh no, yeah. Court bonds. On about yeah. I knew you had it. All right, now, yeah, letter, let, yeah, 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 all right, cool, I, I don't know if Gene made this, but when I showed Brian it, Sean, Gene, he's like, I don't know anybody else that could put one together like that, so it's, it might be from Gene, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this is the letter rogatory, this is a letter of advice, and this says, I, Polinsky Peter Joseph, the executor for uh, Peter Joseph Polinsky, Sestake Trust, to notice the court of my letter rogatory to 
from your county district court um, and demand my name be cleared of this alleged crime case for the reasons set forth below. Number one, I have learned that this alleged court that has scheduled the case cause claim against me is not really a court as per the Constitution of the United States, but rather a tribunal operating as a private corp corporation. And that was from the read in the last class when we went over use uh, our man's day in court. And what he was saying through that, it's just a private corporation out to set, trying to steal my sweat equity. That's all. And number two, I've learned the fraud that goes on behind the scenes of these alleged criminal cases, which are really, everything's a civil case, no matter what. I don't care if you body somebody, civil. You're being civilly sued. Does your, uh, does your tort seizure, it's in the last read, it's a tort seizure. It's all martial law. That's why if you're belligerent, they just wrap you up. <clears throat> and the steps taken to securitize these civil claims without giving full disclosure to the people, I am hereby letting the court know that I am opting out of any contract and do not allow any documents regarding me or my SESTK trust to be securitized and sold to any investors, etc. Number three, the fraudulent process is, is as follows. Yep, all crimes are commercial, 27 CFR 7211. Yep. The fraudulent process of all cases are civil, and fraudulently called criminal. The courts are operating under trust law, assuming the defendant is a decedent. After finding the alleged defendant guilty, the court clerk sells the judgments to the federal courts. Since the defendant is a decedent, the court officials consider themselves as a beneficiary. And then all our paperwork and appointments will say otherwise. When a judge asks if the person understands he or she is asking if the person is liable for the bond. I'm not responsible for the bond of this case, these cases, but I will appoint the judge as trustee fiduciary, and I'll be the beneficiary of all the proceeds. Keep going. Number five. The judgments are stamped with something to the effect of paid to the order of on the back and taken to the federal discount window. The judgment now becomes a note. It's all securities. The notes are then pulled together and then become securities which are yet pulled together and sold as bonds. Said bonds are liens against me. The United States Attorney's Office has put a code number, NIAX, North American Identification Security Classification. Uh, classification. Said, uh, I call it NIAX, NAICS number enables the United States Attorney's Office to trade globally all securities. Hmm. All the U.S. federal courts are registered with the Department of Defense, or they're registered with Contractor Central Registration under the DOD, which has another department called DLIS, Defense, Defense Logistics Information Services, which issues a cage code, which means a commercial and government entity, which everything corresponds with their bank account. Said United States Attorney Office and courts have a Duns and Bradstreet number. Everything filed in court is securitized without the knowledge or consent of the people or all the parties. Number 12, all criminal cases not heard in an Article Three court, district court, federal court, are really civil. However, the courts again committed fraud by labeling the case criminal. All cases which are pled out or have a guilty conviction label the civil defendant through unlawful conversion as felons when they are not. This is fraud on the people at large and certainly fraud upon the alleged defendants. The bank account is at a Federal Reserve Bank of New York or Chicago or Virginia or St. Louis. Uh, the depository agreement is signed by 
the clerk of court. So you can go in there and ask him where the deposit, uh, depository agreement is signed. All securities are deposited with the DTC in New York. An escrow agent is used as a go-between between the clerk's office and Federal Reserve Bank of New York. The securities end up being listed through the Seventh Circuit. There's Chicago, Illinois, Federal Reserve, then sent to the DTCC, the clearinghouse is home list securities for trading. All the lawyers involved are acting as private debt collectors, according to FDCPA, Title 15, Section 1692. That's your private debt practices act. There. The Bar Association exempts them from having to be registered as such. However, they operate through call warrants, which are like a put or a call. Doing margin calls is where they convert a case through similar to a writ of execution. Use the case number to buy equity securities. Everything filed into court is securitized and turned into negotiable instruments and then turning them into securities. That's all governed by UCC Article 8. These items are sold, com uh, sold commercial items, calling them distressed debts uh, only for the items are then pulled together in what now called a hedge fund where they are sold globally. Anytime where there is risk management involved, it is for the securities. This is an underwriting company. When the hedge funds are going into the global market, they go through uh, Lure Herms, a bondholder, an underwriting company and subdivision of Alliance SC in Munich, Germany, Pimco Bonds. After nine months, all paper is converted to a security status. This is defined in Title 15, Section 77, Subsection A, Subsection B, Subsection 1, and is now considered to be an investment contract. The paper is endorsed to become a security, and the trust is then collapsed. Courts have an account with the IMF, the International Monetary, uh, International Monetary Fund, under Interpol. The judges involved and the U.S. attorneys involved do not have an ex uh, accessible oath of office because they cover up the fact that the office, oath of office is between them and the IMF. The U.S. judges and U.S. attorneys are actually employees of the IMF and have expatriated out of the United States. They are now unregistered foreign agents under Title II or 22, which states all foreign agents must be registered. Indictments are true bills, meaning they are negotiable instruments. The district attorney failed to give me a 1099 OID showing me as the recipient of the funds, which is fraud upon me. In my case, I have not been indicted, but still request 1099 OID unless the court wishes to close this account. <laughs> All right, so the judge's oath is his bar number, and then if the governor appointed the judge, then his oath of office will be with the Secretary of State. The unlawful funds through fraud and deception are deposited in the Federal Reserve Bank of New York and they have not paid the tax on this income. According to the Internal Revenue Code, this is a Section 7201 of Title 26 violation. Willful failure to file with intent to evade the tax. A copy of the Depository Resolution Agreement was not made avail available to me from the Clerk of Court. The Clerk of Court makes deposits to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York via electronic funds transfers. The clerk has a private money investment account, which also has a government code. According to the clerk praxis, the clerk of the U.S. District Court is the registrar in admiralty. According to the IRS 6209 decoding manual, the automated, uh, automated data processing manual, uh, all 1099s are class 5 gift and estate taxes. I am asking for the 1099 OID. Yeah, government clerk, everybody can do this. Anybody can do the process. It doesn't have any effect to your job. 
And if they fire you because you filed this paperwork, they just freed you. Who cares? I've never pledged my rights or my body to any gifting program, including any court or court process. I'm not a charitable charitable organization. I demand all funds from the cases, uh, current and past cases, be sent to me within 30 days, or I'll file complaints to the IRS and SEC explaining the fraud that uh, fraud and theft committed upon me and issue a 1099 OID. I demand my name and my Sesta K trust name da, 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 be removed from any and all government databases indicating bad credit, commercial liens, and or the titles of criminal, felon, and or conviction felon be removed immediately and permanently not pro tunk. I hereby request a copy of the depository resolution agreement from the court of clerk, clerk of court, and a W-9 from the judge and the U.S. attorney involved if you wish to proceed with this case. I hereby notice the court that I am the executor of the SSK Trust, according to Title 26, Section 303 and 7701. Companies, corporations, and associations, and trusts are all decedents. This, may, this means my all capital letter name is a legal estate. My all capital letter name falls into this class. I direct all the affairs and financial affairs of your all cap name, different variations. I demand this case and account to be closed, no further steps to uh, take in to securitize it. I hereby ask the court to notify local agents, agencies, put me on do not disturb list, so we do not have to go through this again. I am confident that the court and its officers want to follow the law and perhaps, perhaps are unaware of the processes of civil and criminal cases. I expect no further harassment from rogue unregistered foreign agents. There you go, signature block. <clears throat> I'll put mine together. And this is just something I always send with every pack for court, just a letter of advice. I might add to it. I'm at that point where I can start adding stuff to a lot of stuff, but it's okay. That right there gets, gets them going. Let them know you know what's going on. There you go. Good verbiage. Then you sign it, signature block. There should be a jurat at the bottom, right? Add a jurat. I think I always just kind of, I always have a juror that I used to just copy and paste for everything. Use the same juror. Yeah, All right, exit out of there, then go to Secured Creditor 1, and then Stop the Pirates 1, and then open up Civil Court. Uh, let's take the one. Open up uh, before. Let me see what's in there. I haven't looked at these folders in a while. Oh, there's a season to cease letter there, Laura. Uh, all right. Um, All right, get out of there. All right, notice of international. Click that notice of international commercial claim, I think. Is that what that is? Claim, yeah. Let me read this real quick. X row. All right, go down. Notice of international commercial claim. Administrative remedy. File number. No, I don't like that already. Declarance, no. Respondents, no. Okay, I just want to look. I haven't seen this one. 
in a while. So I'll go over it. E stop by. All right, I see that. Keep going. Keep going. I just don't like this word declarant because you have to come in as a complaint, either a plaintiff or a, a claimant in district court. I don't like, I just don't like that word. It looks good. I'm going to use this. All right, get out of there. Go into, I we lost that. See, I'm going to go over the bill of complaint quick. If we're coming in under Admiralty, we'd be the libel end, wouldn't we? The libel you said? We'd be the libel end. They'd be the libel they Yeah, they're the, yeah they're the libel Yep. Depends on the oh. forum that we're coming in under, yeah. Right. Okay. That reminds me of something. Oh, go back. Go into um shit. Secure Creditor Two, I think. Hold on. Yeah, Secure Creditor Two. Um Freedom Seminar. No, go back. Go to the secure creditor one and stop the pirates too. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, enforcement. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm filling this one out. I think. I think this is the one that I like. Most, the most important things that I'm going to be showing you guys is the affidavit that I'm put together in the bill of complaint. These I never had a really use for, but now I have a reason to use them. So I'm just going over them to look over them if I'm able to. See, this is the bank, which same thing as the court. They're the liabilities. We're the li like like Sean just said, we're the liabilities. Keep going down. So this would be the court. Okay. Yep, go see the notary, get a copy of the notary log book. Boom, true bill, invoice, statement of account. Okay, affidavit, okay, okay. I might like this one. Keep going. Mm. Registered, okay. And there's your 1333. That's where they have the original jurisdiction, Title 28. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, just go down because we're probably we're gonna fill this out in class. We're gonna walk everybody through it. They're gonna see what I go through, what I do, how I attack it. So there's no questions because after I'm done with this, they're gonna be well, you didn't do this. You didn't show. I'm showing you from step one to step two. And I just want to see if I'm gonna use this. Keep going down. I know the rest of this. You go a little bit faster. Okay. 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 Yep. Yep. Cure. Okay. Yep. 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 Let me see that. Let me see that. Okay. Secure. And exactly. See, this one says you're a trustee, and then it's contradicting mad paperwork that I'm about to do. I don't like it. Probably has a defect in there on purpose. Right? That's what I figure. When I go through some of this stuff, I'm like, why would they say that? It's the feds. It's the feds, always with these guys. No, but in certain cases, you're the executive trustee. So when you do your 98 trust, you're the executive trustee. But that's for your 98 number. Anyways, we'll, we'll change that up. That's all. Make that Make a note for we just have to be aware of who we are when we're doing these things, which hat we're wearing. All right. Yes, absolutely. A double-minded man's fruitless in all his ways. If you can't figure <laughs> out who you are, you're going to be lost. You catch yeah. I know. <laughs> all right. Good. Keep going. Hmm. 
Keep going. Keep going. I can read all this fast. Keep going. All right, good. Schedule. It's got the schedule A. Good. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Yep. There's the, the mailing, but I want to do 38.77. I want to do the firm mailing with 38.06. No, 3811. I'm sorry, the return receipt. All right, go down. Okay, okay, okay. Huh. Yep, that's certificate of service. Yep. Good. Yep, register the cases. Cool. Cool. Oh, what are these, Laurel? These. <laughs> My money. Absolutely. All right, go down. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. All right, I'll use that one for fun. See where it gets me. Never used it. Who are you no. going? Against? Who are you going to go against? Who's the uh, libel? Just, just the state of New York. I'm just going to list the state of New York. I'm not going to go after like officers or judges or. I'm just. Gonna, I'm, I'm just. I'm just going to practice on this one. With that. Are you going to start out with a constructive notice? I'm starting off off with an affidavit. Okay. This is just going to be part of my pack, I guess. Is I'm going. A, I'm gonna do the. I just. I'm. This is all. This gonna be part of my pack. Part of my it's gonna be my 82 number where I have my estate, where it says I'm the executor, timestamped. I'm gonna send in my death, my affidavit of death. With if I have the death certificate coming back soon, then I don't know. Um, security agreement, my UCC one, an affidavit. And a bill of complaint and this, and that's it. So I'm sending it. And then I'm going to default them. I'm going to, and oh, and I'll show people, we'll put a small little appeal thing together next class, and I'll put the order in for it to remove it to district court. I'll show you guys how to put the order in court so it's removed. I think it's like they charge you like 50 or 60 bucks, I think, to move it or something. I don't know, or to file. I got to look, I'll tell you. There's a federal, there's a federal issue where an individual, me, I'm, <laughs> has no has no filing fee requirement. I'm gonna send it to you. I know I I know what you're saying. I know where you're going okay. with that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I know where you're going with it. Um all right, so try and think what I can show you. Cause I'm beat. I just drove around for six and a half hours. <clears throat> all right, this is what we're gonna do. Thank you, Sean. Oh, all right, pull, I mean, up, pull, pull I mean, up. Are we lost at C? I want to go over the bill of complaint, and that's where we'll stop. And then next class, I'm gonna pick up. We're gonna. I'm gonna fill out my affidavit. I'm gonna fill out the bill of complaint, and I'm gonna fill out because I'm gonna relook over myself and reread what we just went over the claim. I don't know if I'm adding too much, but it had a lot of really, really good stuff that now that I know what I'm doing, I can use. But next class, I'm gonna show you the, the affidavit with all the charges on it, how to add them up, put it all together, and I'm gonna have the bill of complaint, and I'm gonna dissect the bill of complaint. It has nine parts, and I'll go over each part, one through nine. I'll explain what part one is. We'll create the part one. Then I'll go into part two, I'll explain what part two is and etc. And then that way the whole bill of complaint will be breaking down from one through nine, how to send it, who to send it to, and go from there. And that's pretty all right. So this is court. I'll I'll do another overview of court. So you get pulled over, you get a traffic ticket. Let's 
First thing I do is sign without recourse. <laughs> See, but when I, I but when I get pulled over, we don't have to sign it in New York. We don't have to sign anything. Yeah, they don't. They don't actually need you to sign. They could just take. They could just drive by and send you a ticket. They just like well, to the, pull you over so they can get. Yeah, back. they already hit your estate. You know what I mean? So you, there's the, nothing really to sign at that point. They just off the registration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's a game. They just like to go fishing and see if they can't grab more loot. That's all it is. Not realizing they are digging themselves a deeper hole by playing that game. Right. To someone who knows what's going on. Right. Then they run into the wrong dude. <laughs> you take their bond and everything they're worth. Of right. That's the house. insurance claim. That's is what I'm, you're gonna, I'm putting the insurance claim, and that's why you send the affidavit to the state insurance commissioner. And I always get the IRS involved. I do the withholding and everything. Let the IRS know. That oh, I know. Because Gene does that. <laughs> I, know. I know. I know. Charitable transfer tax. They're terrified of the IRS, and I love that fact because I love the IRS. <laughs> well, when you're credited to the IRS, is your debt collector. Yeah, I know. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Shit gets fun once you know you know what you're doing. So, um, all right, are we lost at sea? Let me see. Go down. Let me see if I can find anything important. Go slow, like, but I'll find something. Too fast. How's your foreclosure cases going? Those are basically stopped. My buddy just sent them all the orders to remove it to federal court, and then I just finished the bill of complaints for him. See, he, he has three properties in Brooklyn and then two in New Jersey, so we had to just change a couple of things and be throughout the form. But they're done. They, he's been he's already lost the house he's still living in it he went to this the auction and the auction was fake and then he he kept going to court and he hasn't been bothered at all really the, auction, the auction's fake because there there is no loan the mortgage is fake everything right fake. it's just all fake <laughs> it's just all pony show so they haven't done anything and now the they know that I'm helping them. And so last time he went to court, um, all the judge, he, he entered in some of the paperwork I did for him. And the judge said, oh, you just need the opposition's paperwork, my paperwork. But we put it in federal court and not the county court. So that's what we did. So now he had all his orders to move it to federal court. So he's done with that. And then now we're just going to, he's going to send it out tomorrow. I was just down there reviewing all of it, making sure that – because he's about to have the lower courts in default. So maybe I can get him on next class and I, I can um, show you what Laurel put together for him because Laurel puts everything together for me. And then uh, – uh, yeah, I think he'll let it, I think he'll let me scan in his paperwork. And then after – not next class, but the class after that. I'll have all his default stuff for you so you can see how it was um, periodically done. And then you'll see my, I'll put all my stuff through too. Uh, Tony's got a question for you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Big Tom. Hey, you going, what? I'm, I'm going good. Everything is good right now. I got good energy going right now, mate. Awesome. I What's just, up? um, when we do this initial affidavit against these people and put a figure man in, how many times, like if, if they've got a claim against, say if they've got a commercial claim against you for 300,000 and you um, and you settle it and then if they won't accept payment, how many times damages can you go after them for? Is there a set amount? Do you only go after them for three or can you go after them for more? It, the only time I've heard about three is like when you find fraud on the contract. So if you were suing them for fraud, yep. then that's three times. And then Sean has something where you sue like 200 times with the SEC or something. Right. It's, a, it's under Admiralty because in Admiralty, you really want to get them to port. So you hit them with something big. Right. So on my um, stuff into the banks, I've done nine times damages. If, um, Good. That's, that's no problem doing that, yeah? That's that's reasonable. There's a guy who had a $350 yellow pages ad, and they screwed it up, and he did the Admiralty commercial claim process, ended up to being $1.2 and that division of the yellow pages over there in Tampa declared bankruptcy, and he got a notice in the mail saying that he was a creditor to that bankruptcy for the $1.2 He decided not to show up for whatever Carol did. I don't get it, but uh, 
<laughs> the banquet, they, they recognize him as a creditor for that 1.2 million. Started out as $350 on a yellow page ad. Wow. <laughs> I like that. Wow. That's amazing. How was that plane ride? It was good, PJ. Yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> just, just have a look around all our local area, and the, the snow's still on the mountains, like 150k from here. So we got good views of that. It was lovely. Wow. When are you I'm coming out? September, late September. Okay. Sounds good. I'm ready. I might charter out there, though, man. We got some stuff to do. Yeah, we'll have some fun. You can have some fun. All right, so what you got anything else, Tom, that you need to ask me? Go ahead, Connie. No, good. All right. So Do we have, huh? Go ahead. Do we have to be a secure party creditor? Or can we just perform like go ahead and show up to court or, or like appeal? I know, I know we're going to talk probably tomorrow, PJ, but I mean, I just wanted to know because your way of doing a secure creditor is totally different the way I got taught. And you know how much I paid? I paid like three grand for all this. Yeah, I know because people are scumbags out there. They're stupid. I'm sorry. They're, they're really. Yeah. And they, they made me stupid too. Like what? Yeah, it's desperate people taking advantage of desperate people. Yes. You know, so it's that's why I'm only doing this stuff for 25 a class because Gene does it for 25 a class. And I said, well, if Gene does it for 25 a class, then I can do it for 25 a class. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. And plus, and plus, uh, I just wasted probably like 10 grand, PJ. Huh? Getting into this tribal stuff to secure, you know, it's it's a mess. So totally, I probably spent like more than twenty five thousand dollars already. It's crazy. Wow, I'm sorry. And, yeah, but but the way you're doing things, I so that's the secure creditor way you want for me to do it in order for this foreclosure to work, right? Right. It, oh right. my goodness. Paperwork has to be set up. The most important part is your security agreement and UCC one, because that's where your entitlement comes from. You, the other stuff is setting up is it's it's funding your trust. So when you go to liquidate it, uh huh. But the most important documents are UCC one security agreement. That gives I, you the power to go and move move around. And I have that. And guess what she told me to do? I'm sorry. I'm not going to mention her name. Uh huh. The instructor told me to um, record it at the county level. Yeah. Well, is that okay? Yeah. The county. Oh. Is the most, yeah, the county is the most important. The county. You're just not recording it. You're making a public notice. That's oh, good then. I'm not doing it now. Okay, wait a minute. Now I I recorded the copyright, my um, power of attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, my security agreement, my uh, indemnity bond, um, my uh, hold harmless agreement, all that she told me to record because <clears throat> she got dust. Well, I tried asking her for help and she's overseas. And what she ended up saying, like, just go ahead and record everything. Like, okay, I'll record it. And the county clerk looked at me, and both of them, I don't know if there's two county clerks, they looked at each other, and they were like, this SPC stuff, I don't know if we're supposed to record it, where it was like $200, $275 to record all yeah, of it. Yeah, see, they get you, you for like per page, yeah. that's why I do a pack, and I do just a public notice, and I send it. If they don't uh -huh. send it back, then I'm like, all right, cool. Never send any of my stuff back. So if they don't send anything back, then they're in agreement. It's accepted. They sent mine back, and that's officially law. That's what it is. And I'm going to go ahead and use it then. Okay. You got it all stamped and stuff? And I got it. Well, um, <clears throat> the million dollar in <clears throat> my insurance, uh -huh. the insurance, the indemnity bond, they, they didn't record that. They said, um, something's wrong with the writing of, on this page. 
and I put it for one billion. I can't remember if it was one billion or one million. Uh-huh. And they didn't record several uh, documents. But what should I do then in this case? Do you have, your, do you have your indemnity bond on the UCC one? I mean, UCC three is it signed? It's signed. It's signed by three uh, witnesses. No, signed. signed. Did you have the assignment to the Secretary of Treasury? Oh, no. Just... No. All right. Well, you have to fill your UCC3 out and assign it to the tre- your bond to the Treasury. Uh-huh. And you just send that UCC3 with the security agreement, UCC1, uh-huh. and your indemnity bond. Uh-huh. Send that to the Secretary of State as a public notice and send it to the county as a public notice. Uh-huh. You don't want it because this is all private stuff. Recording it is making it all public. You don't want that. Yeah, it is all public. Uh, it's all out there. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. All right. So just just make a public notice. Okay. You'll be able to get all that stuff in there. On the In the newspaper, you're saying, right? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Absolutely. You could do it in the newspaper, but I did the only thing I ever put in the newspaper was my common law copyright. Everything else was always just I sent it out to the Secretary of State and I put up that letter and I sent the same thing to the county clerk, same verbiage. And another another thing is I, I have an open case in a, in the county. I'm the plaintiff. I no, got you never go in county. You never. You always go to at the higher court because they just they they'll, they'll, they'll ignore everything because it's going. They they can deny you there. There's no, no wonder. Difference. Yeah, they look at me like crazy, and then um, I'm suing for sixteen thousand dollars because the the money orders that were sent to me were fraudulent. Well, I uh, cashed them out at the bank, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, this guy, this, I'm not going to mention his name, also desperate. I paid him three grand for him to, that's crazy, three grand for him to help me with the petition. I filed it. They charged me 250 bucks to file it. Well, we were going to serve the defendant, and we I did it on my own, but when I went to the county clerk, they went ahead and said, uh, your, your court is coming up. It's too soon and too, um, she's not going to get the notice in time. And, and I said, well, what does that mean? She goes, uh, we're going to have to cancel your court date. And uh, you're going to have to ask the, the, um, the coordinator, court coordinator downstairs to reset your court date. And I said, well, how do I know when I'm when the defendant responds? She goes, we can't tell you that, ma'am. You're going to have to call the judge and reset the date. So that's where my case is at right now. All right. So they're just giving you a runaround. Which yes. They mm-hmm. know you know a little something, but they can just, they're gatekeepers. So they can just tell you a little bit of misinformation and court clerk and. Coordinator. Yeah. Court. District attorney is basically the ones playing the bar. The state, the state is Sean. Sean is like speaking in generalities. Um, no, so there's they're just giving you the runaround. So for example, when you go in there and you go in there and you talk to the clerk and you watch your Q sips, they're like, oh, I don't know what a Q sip is or any of that. That's all they have to say, and then you don't. No one else knows what to say after that. Right. Well, that day, well let me see your supervisor. Find somebody that knows where my Q sips are and my file. Thank okay. you. Okay, I'm, but, I'm gonna go in tomorrow then. I'm gonna go in tomorrow um, and yeah, see where my I'll, case is at. Uh huh. I'll I get up and then call me before you go in. Okay, thank you, PJ. You thank you so much. I'll tell you exactly what to say to him. All right, sounds great. Um, but you, we'll, we'll move everything in the federal court and then okay. you'll see. Can I get uh, my $16,000? Are you going to help me? I mean, like, that's what you're going to... Yeah, I'm going to show you all that stuff. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Does, any, you got, does anybody have any questions? I'll take questions now. Where do, we leave 
before we break away, where do we leave off on, on what we're on the screen about? Okay, so, so this this break. is the bill of complaint. This is where I've learned. I've read this document like fifteen to twenty times, and it's finally. It took me until, I, like I was telling you, I read that other book, that Equity Jurisprudence, and it talked about the bill of complaint, equity, and the prayer for relief, etc. So, um, yeah, go down, because this is what me and Laurel put together. So we took this bill of complaint, we took my commercial notes, and then we took my affidavit follow-up for discharge and combined everything for the foreclosures, for these student loans and mortgages. So back in the letter rogatory where it was saying that the International Monetary Fund was the real party of interest and the judges and court clerks, they all work for the fund. So that's why we're the petitioner and claimants, plaintiff, same thing. And then we're invoking them, the International Monetary Fund. And then, so I would add here that, and then state of New York, we'll get into this next class and I'll start filling this out. And I'll take that pro se off. Um, but then look, this is part one. And part one is how you come, how you're entering in, cause we're gonna be determining the venue. And I'm gonna go in, I'll put one through nine, put the whole bill of complaint together why I'm doing it, where I'm pulling it from, where I got it from, who I got it from, because this is the most important part of everything in federal court is the bill of complaint equity, because it's trust law and securities, and that's what governs everything, this whole shebang. Trust law and securities, and everything is how to control your, your res, your trust property, and how to maneuver it. So you get your your check so you get paid. Yep, and there's number seven, and then the bottom that gets into the prayer for relief, I believe, in section nine. Yep. And that's what we'll start off next class with my affidavit of truth. Cause I need to I need to All right, uh, how do we get assistance from the IRS when our tax department? Okay, you guys have to call, we have to set up a time where you can call the IRS and then have me on the phone with Tone. And then I will we'll call the criminal investigation department. Because it's, you're gonna need IRS form 3949A, IRS form 211, which is the whistleblower. And then I believe I asked for 926, if I recall. I mean, then there's forms 104, 392, I believe. Um, You're talking about doing the uh, audit on the estate, the 2373, 104, 92, and the 4490s, that one. There you go. I sent them to you, by the Actually, way. I, yeah, I've never done those. That's why I was, I was going to talk about and the, and the 4810 is a prompt assessment because all these public actors are fiduciaries. And to protect the fiduciary, it has to do with elder law. You can have them do a prompt assessment. And an insolvency officer from the Internal Revenue Service comes in, a GS 9 or 10 comes in, and they do the assessment using those three forms. And uh, so I named the judge as the fiduciary filled out the 4810 and the, all these other forms and gave me the judge as a fiduciary for a prompt assessment and he sent back the action. No action taken. The case disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I sent that to you. I sent the no action right. order. <laughs> awesome. Thank they're you. Afraid of, they're afraid of the IRS because they're all committing fraud. Yeah, basically. I know. So, well, the, Gene does the taxable termination and he yeah. fills the 1099 AL and he puts the a certain soul, and per, I will get into it, but he goes in, he makes them the recipient of the funds and does the taxable termination. Yeah, the judge, even though he took no action, he still hasn't returned <laughs> the original instrument. So he thinks he's going to walk away with this thing? No. 
No, he's now he's and now he has contraband. <laughs> yeah, he's and I ordered the <laughs> instrument. I ordered the instrument transferred to the treasury, so he's actually in commission commi commi committed piracy. <laughs> I earmarked I mean, probably it for the like thirty and, and thirty other charges. I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do. I'm looking at all. I'm just gonna add everything that I can that I can fit in there. It's one thousand one. It's two forty one, two forty two. Denial of due process. Thirteen forty one, thirteen forty two. Fictitious name through the mail and with artifice and schemes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, know, I know you got a, a million up there in your head. I know it's it. Fun. It gets fun. It's yeah. about to be fun. Sick of this shit, man. People need relief, especially the middle class. You know, so if we can get, because it takes education. You can't be a, you know, a dummy or a dummy dimwit and do this stuff. You actually have to have a head on your shoulders. So anybody that's reading this stuff and pursuing it and learning, it's awesome, man. You're on the right path. And I know people get frustrated because they have their trust set up and then no one showed them how to, you know, do banking or administrate their estate. And so then there's just a lot of confusion. So I'm just going to show everybody what I do and what results I get from what I do and go from that. If we can replicate it, cool. If not, then we'll figure something else out. It all comes down to the, how it flows and goes yeah. the way we were for. I mean, yeah. you can know, you can know, I can know a fact, but if I don't know how to apply the fact, it's trivia. I mean, you... Yeah, I'm trying to teach everybody how to fish. <laughs> <laughs> so it all flows. You know? I also posted in there, G TJ from Freddie Mac. They have a fictitious deed of trust. All these deeds, all these deeds of trust that are filed, they actually file a fictitious deed of trust. All these mortgages are fake. I put it in the chat line from Freddie Mac, and okay. uh, Thank you can you. look at that later. It's, it's, I will. I will. That's fine. Somewhere in the somewhere in the land records, they've already done a, re a release of lien. They've already right. done it, and it's probably not in the, the land, land record. It's probably okay. not in the land. Hasn't they, they, they've hit, hit it in other records, not the land records. They hit it over in the uh, just the county county because it's not a just not land involved. There's no mortgage involved, so they can file it anywhere. Right. I just pass that along to anyone. Wow. Wow. I'm up. Amazing. Another question. What's up? Does the credit from doing the 1099A and or 1099 OID lawfully to the EIN 82 or EIN 98 bank account, or does the IRS mail a check out to you or domicile? Okay, so the 1099A is for acquiring your funds. So example, if you go to buy a car, you get a bill of sale. Um, we do your acceptance on the bill of sale because that's a document of title. That's a bill of exchange because the name, date, and amount, and a signature. Those are the four requirements for a bill of exchange. And then um, you'll send you'll send a check off to you, uh, your UCC contract trust department. Okay, and then you'll when you make the 1099A, you'll acquire the check that you sent out. Because I was just walking through on how to create my own checks using um, the United States Treasury. And your Treasury direct account has to be through the 82 number. And to open up an estate, you have to have the death certificate, you have to go through probate, and you have to have the letters testamentary. And you have to bring that all that to the bank with you for them. Because that's all the requirements to open up an estate investment account brokerage account and that's where you can lodge securities fund your trust do a special deposit uh, I believe form 8888 is where you deposit the funds so because you're so what you're doing is you're taking your bill of sale you send out your check and then you report it on the 1099a the IRS gets the red copy um, you can do all this stuff online now I'm gonna get the website I think it's 1099fire.com or 10 tax something. I got it at home. Um, the 1099A will acquire those funds that you, the check that you sent out because a registered mail number goes across the check. And then, so, try not to give it away. Uh, the check is the res. It's your property. It's your trust relationship. So when you send it out to the, the trust department, the contract UCC contract trust department, they have to give you consideration for that check or mail it back to you. 
So once you send it out, then you claim that check on the 1099A and you don't leave it abandoned. And that's what releases the funds and buys stuff for you. So the 1099A releases funds from escrow. So if you ever went to the bank and you filled out a loan application, the loan application has an account number. The account number is what you want so you can claim that on the 1099A to get your funds. So if you were ever denied a credit card, then you need to go and ask them the application, the account number that's associated with the application. And I'll show you how to fill out the 1099A. So the 1099A, B, and C run the banks. The 1099A acquires the funds. The 1099B is a barter. It's a quid pro quo, which means it's a value for value. And then for mortgages, or you can 1099C the debt. Ten, uh, cancel the debt. Now, getting funds from the treasury to your your bank account, that's, I would look into, I would go to Social Security Administration and look up something called My Account there. And I would see what the Social Security Administration is hooked up to, because I think the Social Security Administration has got an address at 1500 Pennsylvania Avenue last time I checked. Um, so people that get paid out of their social, that get Social Security, all that stuff comes out of your estate. So people that talk to me and they get uh, Social Security checks, I'm like, you know that all that stuff is coming right out of your Social Security number? And all you have to, I think, pretty much do is renegotiate your contract. I've just never seen the contracts for Social Security. But maybe that's something I can look into and reverse engineer it. There was a talk about using the 14, 14, 14, 16, 14, 18, and okay, S. Okay, but I have those forms, and I was just walked through how to I fill those out. That's, the, those are the GSA joints. And the SF-30 form to recast the contract right. as contract. Right, the standard form 30 is another You can shut important. it down or renegotiate higher amount yes. reductions or anything you like. Yeah. Contribution, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, but listen, so, <clears throat> I, all right, so let me speak in general just a little bit. I know somebody that sent off a certain check to um, a Social Security Administration and it was an unconditional donation and this is how you tap into your $11 million a year unified tax credits. So you send your unconditional donation, which is your check at um, a certain amount um, up to, I believe 11 million. And you claim that through the 1099A and 706. And that's how you put up unified tax credits. And I believe with the 8888 form, that's your deposit. Where to deposit into which account. And that's, so now that's 11 million a year. Now we're gonna walk you through and how to set up a Duns and Bradstreet number so you can open up a business. And I'll get into, I was, see, I was gonna get into all this like opening up UCC trade lines and getting 500,000 here. And that, uh, I mean, I know people that, you, you pay them 30000 and you get $500,000 credit because what they do is they buy corporations that have credit already and then they sell you that corporation. I mean, I know a bunch of people that make a bunch of money, but I was a more worried about getting these unified tax credits every year. Then I realized that when you were going to the horror bad line of commerce and having to sell yourself and going to an interview process and filling out an application to get a job, they were taking your estate and using your funds. That's how these big companies got all over. They were using people's estates because they weren't you. They were using other people's unified tax credits. So that uh, application you filled out has an account number with it. You gave them your social. You're getting paid through your own estate. Nobody's paying you. They're taking it out of your estate and paying yourself not coming out of Walmart's, you know, bank account. You gave them your estate. You agreed to take eight fifty an hour, $10 an hour out of your estate. You sold yourself. You're a whore. 
I don't care if you're a male or female. That's what that's what commerce does. It makes everybody whores because you're selling yourself constantly. But then you talk to people. Well, then if you know what you're worth, they go, well, I don't get it. Well, I right, we're we're filling out hundred billion dollar bonds like it's no big deal. So what's next? Now that you spiritually know that you're unlimited, they have unlimited cards and they give you the um, people who place their fears on you that oh you'll never be that rich or you'll never get into that club or you'll never you'll never uh, acquire that amount of money in this lifetime. That's just all fear because they can't do it. Do whatever you want in this world. Anything can be accomplished. You're good. All right. Well, it's 12 o'clock here on the East Coast. I'm going to stop here because I'm going to start preparing all week for next class. And so we'll go over this bill of complaint, my affidavit, and that's pretty much all that we have to get into for court. I'm going to show you how to mail it. And then I'm going to go over the private administrative procedure with you guys and discharge next class. Because of course it's not going to be that long. I'm going to have most of this prepared. Um, and then we'll go through, fill everything out. Because the first part of the affidavit is going to have to be real saucy for me. So I just need a day on it to pull from certain documents. That's all. Then uh, I'll show you how to get a dividend payout. I'll show you how to once after 90 days that the affidavits become an accounts receivable and turn that into a security. A lot of securities. I went to Fidelity today, opened up uh, a brokerage account, an investment brokerage account. We spoke about lodging securities. We spoke about uh, annuities, hedge funds. It's, it's real interesting stuff. Oh. So, anybody have questions? Go ahead. I can take more questions. Okay, good. Uh, one more thing. Uh, about uh, in October, I fell at Walmart unexpectedly, and I read a report. Uh, on my left side has been hurting ever since. Um, long story short, um, I have lost my phone. I lost the attorney's uh, contact number. I just barely got a hold of them. They have my medical records and all my information, but I um, finally got a hold of their number. I called them. Both attorneys are negotiating. The Walmart Corporation attorney and my attorney. And uh, they haven't called me back. They said that because there was a lapse in between, uh, they might just pay me like $697 of, my, of what I paid into a doctor's appointment. And uh, because I never did go back to a chiropractor, which was expensive, I didn't have the money, um, they said that they're just probably going to pay me less than $1,000 for the settlement. <laughs> so, um, I, I they could possibly help you with... The, all the big-time attorneys are injured, are injured attorneys. Like, injured at this, injured at there. So... You're an injured party. We could put an affidavit up and throw some charges at Walmart. You know, we can see. It's all affidavits. They have to rebut affidavits. Ah, uh, okay. okay. If not, if mm -hmm. the affidavit, you'll see, then, you know, we will, we'll send them a notice to cure, and then they don't respond to notice to cure. Then mm -hmm. you default them. So now there's in default for failure to respond, et cetera, mm -hmm. or most cases it's the non-performance, non-fiduciary breach, but in this case, there will be just non-response, silence of acquiescence, which means mm -hmm. that you know, there's no rebuttals. Mm -hmm. So now after 90 days, the affidavit becomes account receivable. Mm -hmm. that, grab your certificate of default from the Secretary of State, mm -hmm. place that on the UCC1, list the amount in the collateral section, mm -hmm. <clears throat> lean it, Sell it, take it to the brokerage account, lodge it as a security, get a dividend yeah. out. And and of course, again, I have to be a SPC, right? Uh, right. Secure. Okay, all right. Yeah. You gotta be secured. And and how much how much can I put on there? Any any amount? What I'm worth or? 
I mean, you can try for a few million. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Well, I mean, it was unexpectedly, and they ignored me. And they have a video. Walmart has a video, does not want to give it up to my lawyer, to my attorney. They said, nope, three times already. Nope, nope, nope. So that's well, where we're at right now. You do a Freedom of Information Act filing. Uh huh. To get that released. Can you just assess them a tax for the value of the damages unless they can prove contrary and just administratively bind them to a $3 million damage package and default them and then take it that way? <laughs> yeah, you could. There you go. <laughs> Who cares about the facts? I'm just going to assess you a tax. I'm the creditor. You're the debtor, Walmart. You're, I'm underwriting everything you do in the public. So I just take $3 million from you. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds awesome. See but I mean? I mean, it's sad because I'm still hurting, but yeah. they don't care. They don't care. And, and they're still negotiating. I'm like, that's why I we said, don't care. That's why uh -huh. we're going to go after them. We'll hit them with for millions. Okay, sweetie. All right. Thank you, PJ. Thank you. You're God bless you. God bless you and Laurel and all of y'all. Thanks. Thank you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Hello. Tony's got a question. Sonia's going to give it to you. Okay. Papa has a question. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Abra. Hi there. So I'm Stop. friends with Anil, and he point, you know, pointed me to this to come uh, study under you guys. I know a lot of stuff, and I'm ready to get started. Awesome. But in the meantime, he couldn't make it tonight, and he got, he was, you know, had has this thing where he, it's this big thing in Colorado where they have charged him with driving under the influence of alcohol, even though he wasn't even driving, he was sleeping. Yeah, alcohol. I know. Okay, I so have all this stuff. So he wanted to, he need, he has 10 days and he wanted me to ask you a few questions. How to shoot down the court case before the court date, something about judicial immunity, how to remove their tricks, how to get it to the higher court. <laughs> Setting the case right. private without, with the DA. I, te I, I texted him, uh, I'll send over the order of removal. Okay. Awesome. I'll call I'll call the district attorney with him tomorrow and tell him that I'm counseling him on the case. Oh, awesome. And then they'll back right off of him. Okay, good. Thank hey, you. PJ? What's up? I, I had that same situation in 2001, and that's when I did the first thing I want to do in any case is to remove my ass off the asset sheet. And to remove my ass from the asset sheet, I prove that there's a denial of due process. And that's when I go ask with two witnesses or, or by yourself, go to the clerk's window and ask them, hi, can I help you? Yeah, I'm here to, I'm here for this. She goes, oh, oh well, your, your court date's not here right now. It's not till next week. Well, I'm here to see the magistrate. Can I see a magistrate? And I'll go, well, no, they're not here right now. I said, well, can I see one later then? She goes, no, I don't know when they'll be back. So I can't, so I can't see one today then? She goes, no. <laughs> this, is the, this is this is all jurisdictions in every state the yep. first time she says no the penal code demands that you see a magistrate to see the affidavit of the complaint signed by the party who's accusing you so you can face them in a court under the sixth amendment so right. the first time first time she says no she commit she made a mistake i can forgive a mistake in breaking the penal code second time she says no she intentionally breaks the penal code and that's a misdemeanor the third time she says no, she willfully continues to break the penal code and commits a felony, denying you due process to face your accuser under the Sixth Amendment. You just have to write that up. It's, it's just the fulfillment of appearance on this date and time before this window, Miss Garcia, window 13. I appeared on three occasions. I asked her, can I see a magistrate? On three occasions, I was denied seeing the magistrate. I have been denied due process. I give you three days to respond to prove I haven't been denied due process and that I haven't fulfilled my contractual obligation to appear. And you send it to the city attorney, clerk of the court, and the lady at the window. This will be recorded. You'll get it. So it's, I'm speaking fast. And then after three days go by, you know, when, once you, your witnesses write up affidavits that they saw you appear and denied due process, right. you take your originals, all notarized. You take copies of them. You take one copy to the clerk of the window. Hi, this is for you, Miss Garcia. And she goes, I don't know what to do with this. This is a file on demand. This is a file on demand. Oh, okay. Please stamp my copy. She'll time stamp your copy. Take the other one to the, to the clerk, to the city attorney. Hi, this is for you. Would you please sign for on, on my original? They stamp my original. They sign my original. 
And then I send one off to the, to the clerk of the court, uh, certified return receipt, priority mail in your case. And ah. when, the, when the three days go by, you send out a notice of default. You're now in default on a promise to appear number ticket number one, two, three. Any further actions by you, your agents or assigns will result in commercial, civil, criminal, professional liability against you, your agents or assigned. City attorney, clerk of the court, lady at the window. Same three process, send them copies and do the same thing. And now they've denied you due process. You didn't break the penal code by not, if you don't go ask to see the magistrate, when your ass is on the asset sheet, they'll give you a courtroom to walk into. And at that point, they know you broke the penal code because you're walking into court. Because if you go ask to see the magistrate, there is no courtroom for them to give you because the case disappears. So by walking, walking to the courtroom, the clerk says, go to court number 13. By walking in there, the judge knows you broke the penal code. And it's breaking the penal code of not seeing the magistrate is what they convict you of. Not what, and then they decide how bad of what you did, determine how bad your penal code penalty is. <laughs> but it's not going to see the magistrate is the violation of the penal code that they, they right. Absolutely. There Beautiful. 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 So Sonia has a question for Tony. Um, he would like to know, should he put a 1099-C in to cancel the debt that he discharged to the Treasury with the money order? Should he put it on an online filing to cancel yes. the debt? Yeah, you can do that. What's he, what's he hoping to do by doing that, PJ? What's the result of that? The 1099-C cancels the debts. But if it was already cancels canceled? Court, cancels court cases. I know that's, I mean, it's, he's good. I would, I think he's like beating a dead horse now. Couldn't he just re reacquire that credit that they have with us? <laughs> Since it's already been discharged, that means they have his credit. Yeah, right. Oh, PJ, the banks come back to him saying that he still owes the money, that they're not recognizing his um, money order. They only sent him a letter. They didn't send him an affidavit or anything. It was just a True. notice. And that's what he's going back to them for, which is, but that's why he was curious to know about the 10 Yeah, dollars. no, he's good. He already got the court order. They're good. There's nothing to go back after anybody. Nothing hey, to go back. What's up? Over in, over in Australia, they have the 1099 A's, B's, all the IRS forms are there in Australia. No one, t no one just asked for them. Um, so they have the same IMF access to use the same forms we do. Yeah, I know. Hey, PJ, this is yeah. not for liquidator. This is to discharge the farm. Oh. So, that, so the liquidators, that's a separate <clears throat> thing. It was, um, oh, you, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right. when so I'll call you tomorrow. I'm free tomorrow. I'm chilling for the next few days because I have all my paperwork going out tomorrow. Right. So I'm this weekend, I'm going to be really relaxed. I'll be able to take phone calls and stuff. So I'll be able, I'll be free. That is wonderful. Thank you. No problem. I miss you. Yeah, we miss you too. Can't wait for you to come back. We'll be, I'm coming with Sean and Gene. Oh, wonderful. Sean's got a, the hugest following. He's like David Hasselhoff over there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know. That's, I think he's big in like Germany or so. I forget. I have, have my TFN ready to go. I'm able to be there if I want to. Nice. <laughs> Nice. All right. Is there any more questions? Oh, we'll Someone did say, "Where do I get? Where will I get two witnesses when filling out my bond documents?" T. Rice. Oh, two witnesses. Mm-hmm. Um, that it, that can be anybody. It doesn't matter. But if you need witnesses, like need them, so and people are scared, I can have one of my friends witness my signature, <clears throat> and then the other sureties they can have a witness. Uh, follow their signature. So don't worry about the witnesses. You do it over Skype, couldn't you? Yeah. Or Zoom. Yep. Yep. Then it's just a matter of getting the document to them. That's the only rub. Yeah. That's it. But yeah, all that's covered. Got all that guys for you guys. Thanks for letting me interject with some of these things. I don't want to see one. No, I need you to have... do that. I need you to do that. You're okay. the best. I don't yeah, want anyone to go to jail when they haven't hurt anybody. <laughs> right. You're the best. But, Pete, by uh, the way, if he I'm was sorry. drinking, do not drink and drive. Do not hurt anybody. Do not do stupid things like that. Take a cab yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Don't He's do a good dude, though. He wasn't doing that. He's a good dude. 
I wouldn't okay. help me. DJ, I'm going to complete so. all the, all of my documents before you do my call, okay? Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. You got my number? No, I don't. Laura, send him my number. Okie dokie. Thank all you. Right. Hey, PJ. I, I need your uh, number too, Pito. Okay. Hey, PJ. I just post, I posted in the chat right there the Economic Stabilization Fund, which created the World Bank and created the IMF as a straw man face for the ESF. There's a... <laughs> Yeah, they, all the gold, when the, we went bankrupt, all the gold was put into an economic stabilization fund that's in the federal, basement of the Federal Reserve Bank. And it's a corporate soul. Has no, Congress has no oversight when they created this corporate soul. And that corporate soul with all that gold created the public debt interface of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. And that's how this whole thing started out. And, and that's how the I'm bank... I'm definitely going to read that. So it's another no, videos. And so we, we okay. have it as, as well, one of the... Better, even better. As one of the posterity to that ESF, I have a I have a claim against that ESF fund. That's because they took my gold. They took my ancestors' wealth, and I'm an right, heir. Right, to right, 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 right. Absolutely. So that's in the link. That's in the chat right okay. now. My, my last one. Last one. Laurel, send me that one personally. Okay. Um, another question: How do I get my car out of repossession due to excessive tickets in New York State? You're going to have to 1099A all the tickets. Gene, did you want to chat? Did you want to unmute yourself and chat? Did you have a question? Hi, no, um, I'm just so new, I guess. You know, I don't know if everybody's done their packet and. Oh, yeah, no. Some people have them done in class, some people don't, but the first four classes are your foundation okay. and the background of the documents. And then now all these classes are going to be how to work in commerce, how to be court, how to get paid off defaults, how to default companies. Um, uh, and then I'll show you guys how to bank and do secure transactions. And how many classes will there be, PJ? I mean, I just, we get a bunch of emails from what people want to go over. So I'll, the main ones, we'll probably have at least another 10 classes because I got Sean that's going to be holding classes. Hopefully I, I can get Gene to come in here and show you guys some tax stuff. And I'm Sean could show you all this stuff. So, so there's going to be a bunch of classes. We're going to keep doing classes. Well, you know what I mean? At least once or twice a week, um, according to what emails say that what people want us to go over. Um, but I think that discharging debt is an important one and going over court is an important one. I'm going to go over foreclosures with you guys. But as you see, I'm going to handle this court case. This is how everything else is handled pretty much, except with a few minor, minute um uh changes in the, in the on some of the paperwork that's all okay so you know I'll, I'll i'll get caught up you know to speed with everybody yeah um you know when i get ready to do all my paperwork um you know i mean uh, obviously you're gonna be busy with it i'll be here for no whenever you need me um i'm so there's some weeks like i mean the last few weeks i've been real i mean just really busy heads down finishing up these last steps so I can really show you guys how to purchase things and start building businesses for yourself to help out your brother and sister, help out your community. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just amazed that you're only charging 25 a class and I'm like in awe over here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's such a huge process going sovereign and I really just got my passport. That's like the only thing I've kind of done. I haven't done any rescission letters or anything like that yet. How many stars did you get on your passport card? Um, let me look. Oh, my purse is downstairs. Um, I think it, it's, it's a status P, but I don't, are you joking? Is that like a joke? No, you're fine. <laughs> oh. No, because, no, it's not. <clears throat> we just, because there's, there's different kinds of passports. Yeah. Um, he's just wondering because Sean's oh, got a yeah. Bad. What I did was, um, you know, I took out every.
person connected to me. So I'm I'm a I guess I'm a citizen national. Is that what I am? Okay. Okay. Well, you're an American national. American national. Yep. That's yeah. UC uh, Title Eight USC. What what's it what's that on my signature, Black Laura? So she knows the code. I'm using one stat four seven seven American citizen. Stars. I don't know what where's the stars? Where do I count them? Right above my name. Yeah, it's above like on the front. It's on the passport card, not the passport. Uh, right. Booklet. There's four it's stars. The eleven oh one twenty one. Above my name, I guess. Yeah, it's eleven. You got four. Yeah. Did you it cross out all the terms and conditions? Did you cross anything out on your DS eleven? Oh, cross anything out? Um, no. Yeah, there's a portion in there that says cross out anything that doesn't apply to you. I have, I have anything that applies to you. I, I have not engaged in war against the United States. You would have to cross that out, people. So you know, there's a tricky section on the DS-11. There's one section where you have to cross things out. Oh, really? Otherwise, you're admitting you did wage war. You are a sex offender. You are a drug dealer. You are... <laughs> It's true. It's on the DS-11. You have to cross it out. It says so. And, and include an explanatory statement. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, what does that get you? Are you, like, higher than a citizen national? Well, you're not at war with the United States. Mm -hmm. True. Acts or conditions. That's on page four. Acts or conditions. If any of the below mentioned acts or conditions have been performed by or applied to the applicant, the portion which applies should be lined out. I have not, uh, I have not been naturalized as a citizen of a foreign state. Is that true? Yes, then cross it out. I have not been convicted of a federal state or drug offense <laughs> or tourism. It's, there's a double negative in here, which makes all this stuff apply to you. <laughs> anyway, go read it on, on the DS-11 page for extra conditions and, and see if you can work. <laughs> But I don't think you have printed to printed out the whole thing. Like I just gave her the just the application form. You know, I didn't submit all five or six pieces. Of it. Well, that that and that's and there is the trick. Acts and conditions and an explanatory statement and and a, where you get to explain all this stuff. Anyway, separate issue. But okay. okay. Amazing. All right, guys. Oh, it's late here. You gotta go to bed. You gotta go yeah, to bed. Had a long day. Love you guys. Thank you so much for showing up. Thank you guys for your support. You guys are the best. Stay persistent. All your dreams will come true. I love you guys. Have a great, great night. And I'll be in touch. We're going to start having some real fun. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you Sean. Thank Definitely. you, Laurel. Thank you, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Tanya. If my if my interjections bother people in the chat room, just chat me to be oh, no. quiet. And... No, no. You're okay. fine. Okay, good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Oh, good night. Good night. Good night.